Hi and welcome, here is Marcin and today I'm going to show you something I wasn't doing really that often on this channel and I'm going to show you how to work in Capture One. In fact, I'm going to show you how to retouch whole image in Capture One, how to process fashion image like the one you can see right now on your screen. So this will be a little bit challenging because we have very similar dress to the skin tone. So we'll be working with local adjustment layer. And I'm going to show you, as I said, whole process. Uh, for those who are interested in uh, more workflow in professional retouching in Photoshop, I'm going to make sure there is link in the description that you can have for free my course. So link in the description, get my course for for free for the first two months. You can cancel it before that and you won't be charged at all. And so I believe it's an amazing deal uh, to learn professional retouching for free. And right now let's start our retouching. So uh, for those who doesn't know, Capture One is amazing uh, processing software. Um, for photography, for images, and um, I won't be explaining everything. We have some panels on the top as everything has. Uh, camera has panels, Lightroom has panels. So I'm making this video for people to who are actually using and checking how they can uh, process the images or for people who just downloaded Capture One and want to know how they can quickly process so there is few panels I usually work. Uh, the panel, which is this one, let me read because I never even learned them to remember. It's not really showing off. Let's try again. Color, panel color, the other panel, sorry for this. Uh, the other panel will be exposure. So this is two panels I'm working and also local adjustment layers. Um, and I'm going to start straight away from local adjustments um, and because um, I'm not going to use exposure, I can use this in here in local adjustment, so it will be just fine. And first thing I want to do, I want to knock down some of the highlights over here. It's way too much and if I can knock it down a little, that would be great for me. Uh, not so much for the shadows, they're not so deep and I'm not going to work later with Photoshop to, to bring back the shadows. So I don't really want to knock them down that much. So I'm working with high dynamic range uh, and this is my first step ever, no matter where I work, how I work. The next step will be doing something with the dress and as the dress has very similar uh, color to, to the rest of the image, I need to work separately with it. So we need to create separate adjustment layer just as you create adjustment layers in Photoshop. Um, it's not so easy to have that much control on adjustment layer in Photoshop, but it's still useful and um, powerful. So I'm going to write it down as a dress. Uh, the thing that you can hear all the time is actually some bird outside, even it's night. Um, so some stubborn bird over there. And uh, as I created the adjustment layer, I'm going to color editor and I'm using advanced. So let me, let me do something. And I'm going to choose the dress color and nothing is actually changing right now because I need to paint over the dress to actually see something. So I'm going to change the values. So I will I will know what's painted and what's not painted. I'm going to use this as you can see. Now we can see what are we doing. So I'm going to zoom this in and I'm going to paint over the dress trying to be as careful as possible with the hair. Uh, I believe I won't be super careful. Uh, I will try to be the best, but you know, it's tutorial. We, we need to rush sometimes. So let me try to do this as fast as possible. The speed of computer doesn't really help that much. It works really slow. Um, I'm not going to be bothered about the this thing over here. I'm going to erase this, erase this later. 
and also with the hair over here it will not be so easy i just i just feel we have to actually um get them a little painted and what i will do later i be praying let's say to actually my hair not be affected by the color it's it's not the color I want to choose. I just change it right now, so I see better where I'm painting. Of course, uh, don't think it's the final color. I would never do this to the model, to the to the dress especially. So it's actually not so easy, you know, some of the parts. And let's go down over here. A little bit more painting. I wouldn't. You don't have to be really bothered of getting outside of this because you know the color outside is very different. So the the most important is the you don't want to affect the skin that much for painting this. So okay, we nearly finished. Uh, we'll just have few pixels where we want to mask the skin and maybe mask the hair as well if i be able to just gonna try first with the with the hand i don't really like the fact about capture one not being very intuitive you know this is the I mean, like, I have tons of great words for Capture One. And, you know, not only me, because, like, you know, many people love Capture One. But it's not intuitive at all. Like, the software is great, but, uh, you know, like, Photoshop is super intuitive. It's, like, so convenient uh, to work with. Whatever bad words you want to say about Photoshop, it just... Photoshop is truly intuitive, like software. You have so many short keys, uh, and when you work with the pen, you can just move all the time. And uh, you know, I don't really feel that with with Capture One. I just, it it might be my fault. Don't get me wrong. It absolutely could be my fault. But yeah, I'm. I mean, could be mine, but could be not. Like, let let me know your thoughts. Do you feel Capture One is intuitive? I uh, think I'm just like having silly reasons for she hating of the software. I'm not hating on the software, first of all. That's that's for sure because actually loving the software, but. Just do not consider this as a very intuitive. So it's a little bit different thing. I just don't find this that comfortable. And somehow it's slow. Um, it might be because you know MacBooks are not that strong, but I just think it's still very slow. I need to paint over the hair. Just feel I have no choice. Oh, like I would have the choice if I would be working with a very small uh, adjustment layer, but no one really wants that. Like no one really working that. No one wants to spend hours of doing that. So just going to paint everywhere I need and. That's it. We have new adjustment layer. We painted this over. So now let's go back to our color editor that we already changed before. And let's see. Let's see what was the first thing we had with the dress. Okay, so that was pretty much the dress at the very beginning of our journey. And uh, what I would do here uh we can one uh, change the hue into a little bit like lower 
just I'm going to make this that way just to make this uh, dress a little bit more popping but what I see um, the hair you, you can uh, I'm sure you can see it too this is not something I like so I will try to fix it really I, I thought it might work and I gave up on this but it's not going to work that well so we need to be really careful here and um, mask it anyway Okay. I think it's a little better. So we sorted out the dress, um, very basic step. Um, now I would like to uh, work with uh, some contrasts. For sure, the contrast is something that we cannot miss ever. So of course for this I'm going to create new adjustment layer. And I'm going to call this contrast. And let's let's start with the not high dynamic range. Should be exposure. Here is exposure. And I'm going to pull up the contrasts a little bit. And the saturation can be a little higher as well, as I want this image to be warm and actually popping. Exposure, I will take down like just this is not so we did the first step so we did the first step and the second step we'll be doing I uh, would actually want to go to my background layer and now work with exposure a little bit. So I would actually take down some of the exposure and bring up some co some uh, brightness and of course make this image a little bit more contrasty, always after color. Uh, we work with contrast and we can also add a few saturation points as I would prefer this image to be rather warm. So uh, this image has some more contrasts. I like really strong contrast. We have to be careful because it's outdoor image, of course. So I would really recommend you to be careful. And as we sorted this out, we have uh, something I don't like. So we have very overexposed face and we need to do something with it. So I would create another adjustment layer. I would call this face. And I would actually paint with my mask over the face. Can I do this? Just should be somewhere um here's the are you gonna to display mask? You, you you need to check this. I'm going to check only display when painting, so you can know where the mask is done. And um I'm going back to exposure. And I'm gonna take down just a little bit of the exposure. You can see from the face. Just was a little overexposed. I hope you're going to agree with me. Maybe even rather soften and take down some of the brightness. So let's see now before after. I think now it's, the face is so much better. Like it was obviously it was over overexposed and maybe i would like to add some of the dynamic now so i would actually create another adjustment layer and i would call this light and um where i want to paint for sure uh, let's try somewhere on the hand let's try like this I cannot really do a step back similar as the as in Photoshop. So 
and it actually can be done by this too. So, yeah. I'm not really familiar myself. Even I work all the time with Capture One. I never paid attention to the to short keys. And let's see if we can brighten the hands a little bit. The nicest contrast. And we can also brighten up the dress in few points, wherever we need, wherever the lights go, just to make it more contrasty. I have no confidence that much about the dress as I had about the hands. I didn't paint this that nicely. So I want to just do some correction. I hope you actually all right with the fact that I'm experimenting and it's quite spontaneous. I wasn't playing with these images before at all. This is all what I'm just doing right now. So of course we need to change the setting of the masks. So choose draw mask and the size was right, but what was wrong was hardness. We want soft and we want opacity. We want uh, flow to be smaller for this. And that will be, now will be perfect. Actually, for hands would be also great to work that way um, because I think we made it a little too harsh. So now let's check. Okay, and I can call it light. So it brightened up a few things. Uh, how about brightening up? some of the areas around her hair that would be a good idea uh, i'm going to do this on the same layer uh, of course you can do on separate layers i just uh, i just don't want to create too many layers for myself and if i can do this on one layer that would be really good So have a look. Also, I think enough. Maybe another one for the eyes. And then zoom this on over here, over her eyes. And paint the mask on the eyes this time. Just in shape as I did. And now we can just simply bring some brightness, bring some exposure. Instead of brightness, I would go with exposure maybe. Of course, that was like overdone, I believe. You can also use the curve for this. There is like many different ways you can, you can work with it. Curve would be fine and I just use an exposure, it's convenient, it's easy. As again, like as you can see, you can use the curve for it. Maybe you can even have more control with the curve. I don't want to make the eyes overdone. Let's see, from the distance, it's fine. It's a little too shiny, but just going to take down what I did over here with exposure. So this is much more dynamic already. And um, I like it how it is. It's not really overdone, it's just looking good. And uh, one of the last parts is of course, we need to work a little bit with the skin. So I'm just going to zoom on the face because I, that's where I can see things clearly. Color editor, skin tone, and I can choose the skin tone. I can see the tones. If I want them to be more, of 
course, I need to paint over the mask. The add another one. Okay. Once again, I'm going to call this face. This this time is like different reason because this time I'm just going to do this for the skin tones. So on after we paint, I'm going down to color editor, skin tone. I'm going to choose skin tone. And you can see, like, if we go all this way down, it will be too yellowish. This way will be too red. I felt it's a little red, so I would like to work a little bit um, with the hue. I don't want to make it oversaturated, of course. Um, so you can add some saturation or actually desaturate this. I don't like things too saturated, so maybe just tiny bit down of saturation just around this level. Let me look at the image from the fair distance. And I actually feel the face is still a little too, you know what I mean, too bright. So maybe around this. And now it's not that just highlights over here. And once we did this, we can work with the color balance. So we can actually um, work finally with these two colors with warm dress and uh, the shadows. So let's uh, go back over here and let's use color balance. So for the shadows, I have the gate, which are rather cold colors. So I would go with cold colors over here and I want to find the right one. So as you can see, the worm are actually not really great. And uh, blue over here are working uh, fine. Just till this level and highlights a little bit into the reds. As you can see, not fully because I'm actually going to blow this out everything. So some warm color for the highlights. How about mid-tones? Let's have a look what we'll do with mid-tones. We could add some also warm color. Cold would not really suit here, you can see. But I don't, personally, I don't really like to work in with mid-tones. Uh, some of their red, like red or strong orangey color uh, would do the job. So I see it's um, rather solid. We can also work a little bit more uh, over the contrast. I feel it could have a little bit more contrast. And this is the look that I'm actually starting to like. This would be um, for now. And we have, of course, a few other things we, we could do. We could uh, sharpen this image a little bit and do some other interesting things. Um, I would, I, I really like noise. So um, I don't know if I can actually add the noise. Uh, I wonder if clarity, of course, we still in the mode of the face adjustment layer. So I'm just going to details and I'm going to work in details. So if you want to sharpen image, as you can see, I'm going to zoom this maybe so you can see everything clearly. How this works, how the sharpening works. I just want to make sure that the dress looks nice and sharpen, but not overblown. Threshold rather smaller. So pixels would be, could add more of the amount. Okay. Uh, so film grain, wonder, wonder if it works. I actually never used film grain 
and it's absolutely amazing. I can see it works just as similar to noise. What I'm never, why I'm never doing this because I always add noise in Photoshop. So, if you would be wondered, uh, but let me see also at the noise reduction if uh, if the noise reduction actually working. But no, we don't really have noise, so just going to leave the settings as they are. And film grain. I'm I'm actually going to add and uh, just a little bit it breaking the tones uh, nicely uh, so I truly really like it and um, that would be it I don't want to really experiment with everything that I barely use uh, but I want to give you answer for the thing what if I would actually work with the capture one how I would edit my image. So that would be the answer for it. Let me have the final look for the sharpen. I want this image to be strong and sharpen and that would be around that. So maybe you want to see the image before and after. I'm sure we can make it. I'm just going to image and new warrant. Let's have a look. Let's compare them both. Uh, image on our left is after processing an image on our right is the image we had before. You choose the one you prefer. Of course, you might like the right one uh, more. I know this video was rather slow. I was just doing my workflow, how I would do, like by trying and some things doesn't work. That's how the work is. We never do actually everything fluent. And on the left is the image uh, I finished. It's really nice and sharpened. And I like this look for the outdoor image. It looks the way I would like it to be. So thank you for watching. Check the description for more details, for some uh, free courses. And look after a new video here. Hope you like it. Give me a comment in the description if you like it. If you think it's horrible, give a comment that it's horrible. Uh, I don't really mind. It's your opinion. And I'm going to see you in another tutorial. Thank you.